Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh I'm so happy to see Good you to guys. See you. Uh, you know you've made it when you get invited to a carpool launch up. <laughs> so I'm so, so happy to be here, mate. Oh, it took oh. you five years, mate. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name's Dean Payne from the Crate Flexible Office Space. In the back here we've got Rory from the... Marcus and guys. And our carpool honcho today is my cousin. What? My bro, Jason Payne. Thank you very much. We sure do. Same Same very surname. Much. <laughs> yeah. We sure do. And he's the co-founder of The Beer Spot. We are so pumped to have him in the car today and we're going to have a whole blast lot of fun. So, so good to see you, Dino. Yeah, Rory. mate. Very good to Thank see you. Thank you very much Thanks for having for me, fellas. Did you Appreciate bring it down? Where's Love you, mate. Hey, 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 we're driving here. Oh, right. <laughs> You're driving, it's driving. <laughs> hey, tell so, us, um, do you have a, a song that really lights your fire? Well, you know, we've uh, we've done the Elvis specs today, uh, and, you know, I'm a big fan of Elvis, and I think we're going to be talking about that a little bit. Um, but one of his uh, favourite songs for me that sort of gets me going is Bigger Hunk of Love. Ooh, yeah. Now, you used to be a bit of an Elvis impersonator, right? So Yeah, the real folks call it an Elvis tribute artist, Dino. Oh, uh, but, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I did that for a couple of years when I had a bit of time sort of while I was setting up the beer spot a few years ago. And, uh, yeah, I just love Elvis. I was introduced to him by my uh, foster mum, Betty King, uh, when I was about six years old. And um, so that was 1976. And of course, Elvis died the next year. And I was so broken. Oh. I was so broken as a kid because I'd seen this incredible, uh, you know, this larger than life figure. And I was so fascinated by his crazy jumpsuits and outfits and stuff. Yeah. And of course, his amazing voice. And so, yeah, I was pretty broken when he died. But, but you know, I've been, I guess, sort of a fan since I was about six. And, um, you know, so I thought, I've seen a lot of uh, tribute artists do this kind of thing before. I said, I thought, you know, I might give this a go, you know, just for um, just for some fun and some giggles. Um, so, you know, I did it, did it for a few years, uh, fellas, and I uh, went to Australia to represent New Zealand in the uh, Surfers Paradise Ultimate Elvis Tribute yeah. Artist Competition. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> so I uh, hung out with some really serious guys who do that sort of thing, and uh, and we got in the top ten, so I'm pretty happy <laughs> <Yeah>. about that. <laughs> hey, baby! Much of you. Oh, no, 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 baby. Hey, ain't asking much of you. Oh, you're just, just a bigger, 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 bigger uncle. Will you? Will you? Don't be a stinky little mama. You're about to stop me half to death. But you can share a kiss or two. I've still got plenty left to go, oh, baby. I ain't asking much of you. Oh, you're just a bigger, bigger, bigger uncle. Will do. Will do. What a so bunch good. of fun. <laughs> Crazy guys. Good old rock and roll. Good old Lovely. rock and roll, mate. So, come on, proud that big spot on your chest there, mate. What does it say? There it is. I think it says something like rib. Oh, no, beer. <laughs> rib, beer. Rib, yeah. Beer spot, mate. Yes. How did it come about? Yeah, so the beer spot's a culmination of uh, seven years worth of effort with my great business partner and friend, Lawrence Van Dam. And uh, seven years ago, uh, Lawrence and I used to enjoy a beer together. Our kids went to the same school, so we'd hook up for a beer and talk about life issues and things like that, you know. Um, and we kind of found ourselves um, running out of places to go and sort of not having as much choice as we would have liked. And we had an inkling there was a really uh, great underlying beer industry uh, in the market. And we just sort of discovered uh, that there was really no place that offered you a great variety of choice. Mm -hmm. And so a very old hospitality business model is you have the same drinks list, you have the same food list, and it's all down to your million dollar fit out to bring people in. Yeah. So spanky fit outs will give you trade for about six months, but unless you keep changing it up yep. and refreshing things, uh, people will find a new place to go to. So we don't concentrate so much on fit out, uh, the beer is the hero, and our weekly <laughs> rotating food truck. And so... It's real popular, man. Yeah, well, thank you, well, mate. And winning formula. Yeah. Well, I think so, and, and you know, it's simple, And but the idea is to give people a reason to turn up, so we change the beers all the time and rotate the food truck each week. Very cool. And what makes you guys different from anybody else? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just that. It's the rotation of beers. Um, interestingly, the uh, beer market in New Zealand is dominated by the big three, Lion, DB, Independent Liquor. They have 93% market share, wow. and there's over 250 independent local brewers who share 7% of the market. 
And so for us, that's just not fair. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that was the idea. Our, our mission statement was five branches in five years and 200 taps in 2020. And we, we achieved that with eight months to spare, but way, <laughs> way, way over budget. <laughs> way over budget. So, so please come visit us. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. Spend your money with the best spot. Quick. There, there is one different thing. You guys can't see it, but he's wearing a kilt right now. Tell us about the kilt. <laughs> well, look, I... Um, <laughs> You know, I like to wear traditionally shorts in the summer. I put the shorts on this year and I thought, I, f I kind of feel like a schoolboy. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, I, I turned 50 last year, so, I, you know, I'd like to think of myself as mature. <laughs> but uh, I thought, you know, what, what are the options other than shorts? And so I, I started doing a bit of Googling around. I thought, wow, you know, a kilt. I'll wear a kilt. Nice. And uh, I'm used to it, but a lot of people aren't. <laughs> I love it, love it. I'm jealous. Good, good airflow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was jealous of. <laughs> so, Jace, the Bear Spot has won a number of really cool special business awards, mate. Tell us a bit more about Oh, this. look, the, the awards are very flattering, do you know? We've, we've picked up a couple of Westpac Auckland Business Awards and Northwest Country Business Awards. But I think, that, you know, the biggest award and reward for uh, the Bear Spot in the past 12 months is keeping all of our staff through this really difficult time. Wow. Particularly um, in hospitality, mate. A, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, so, that's incredible. Yeah, it's been great. Right. And, and you know, the other big tick, which means so much more than, than any award people could give us, is, um, you know, our customers who turn up every single day mm. and support, you know, not only the beer spot, but the hundreds of independent brewers and, yeah. and food trucks around the country. And so that's, you know, super heartwarming and, mm. and uh, yeah, the, the biggest achievement for our business. Yeah. That is well done. Yeah. wonderful. Well Thank done. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Brilliant. Big shout out to all the beer spot staff. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Um, tell us about the food truck idea. How did that kind of come? So to, that's genius, mate. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> well to operate a uh, liquor license, you have to provide a substantial food offering under the law, the 2012 Sale and Supply of Liquor Act. And running kitchens is is a completely different business from selling liquor and but you have to do it uh, but kitchens are a money pit and they're very difficult to run and they they are really a second business within mm, a business and true. require just as much attention so by getting um, food trucks in it means we can change our menu each week and support another form of your local independent industry and mm. and it takes away all of the pain of trying to run a kitchen in a, in a hospitality it's business. It's so innovative so but it also sets you guys apart from everybody else, right? Mm. People people love that about the best mm. one, you know? Mm. The old... Um, it's fun and you know the, the, the quality of uh, these food trucks these days is just wow, incredible, awesome. you know? It's think more sort of restaurant quality rather than corn dogs and totally, chip nuts. Totally. Yeah, it's amazing. Where, where can we find the, the food truck next? Um, well, they rotate around all the all the. There's a different one each week at yeah. the five different sites, yeah. uh, and we have a huge rotation. I think we have about twenty or thirty food trucks that help us out. Mm, and so um, cool. So you know, that, that's an interesting part of our model. We just charge a, a very small site fee for them to be there. They get to keep all the cash they make, and wow. and so you know, because we need to be collaborative in business, we need to be giving each other a hand up. It's the only way to do business mm, in, in mm. this era, mate. Yeah, Which is why I'm so proud of what you've done with the crate. You know, it's it's just an amazing. Yeah, workspace yeah. and and I bet you it's uh, you know it's way beyond what you imagined in so terms of in terms of what comes out of it, it must be incredible Such a good space yeah and it's exactly because of that you you know you realize that you are you're just a little bit of something on your own but you're a whole lot of something with others you know mm. what sort of values and principles did you guys set out to, to do you know to run your business by that's allowed you to kind of really be the the hero in that business space. I, I think I'm an inherently lazy person, and and so <laughs> if I can avoid not having to do much, you know, I'm, I'm going to take that road. And I think that's kind of a human nature type of thing. Um, so really, it's about um, having a really good um, uh, business system and being able to and being able to do that. You know, the way to do that is to is to keep it simple. Mm. And um, but you know, some of the things that we do differently is that all of the suppliers we buy beer off are, are small businesses, and cash flow is king in small business. There's, right. there's no two yeah, ways about absolutely. it. So yeah. instead of waiting to twentieth of the of the month or stretching out to 30, 60, 90 days like some bars do, mm. um, we pay on invoice. We pay as soon as we get the invoice. Wow. Sometimes before we get the beer, because these small businesses need that cash for the next batch of ingredients for their next group of beers. So, you know? That one, that, that, you can just say that quickly, but it's a big deal, right? And in the sense of your 
um, the behavior, I guess, that, that you are sort of encouraging from your suppliers and, and back again, right? Because you, you rely upon your suppliers, right? For sure. Um, and it changes the dynamic of how you do business. And it seems like a small thing, but man, it can make a massive difference. Yeah, I mean, like how many, you're on the, what, you know, a lot of these TV shows. Yeah, we did a flight with the AM show uh, with, right. with Duncan and, and Amanda That's and cool. the team. And that was just talking about um, uh, vegan beers because, you know, Duncan made a commitment to go vegan if, <laughs> if, if, if the Labour government, uh, you know, governed alone. So it was nice to be able to offer him some options. Duncan, yeah. did you know, to go vegan? Oh, I hope you lived up to that, Duncan. <laughs> Man, talk about being on TV. We hadn't caught up for a while. And I'm watching uh, one of the evening news shows and uh, someone's interviewing Jason Payne, my cousin, teaching New Zealand how to pour a beer. <laughs> and I thought, to my, I just chuckled, thought, mate, if there's one family that knows how to teach New Zealand how to pour a beer, it's the Payne family, mate. It's in the genes, it's buddy. It's in the genes. Yeah. It goes right back to yeah. Gramps, eh? For and sure. home brews. For sure, mate. Yeah. Good yeah. head on the top, all that good Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Oh. So, yeah. Jason, the, the bigger guys, I mean, Kiwis love drinking, right? Mm hmm. The bigger, bigger players in the market, do they see the smaller um, microbreweries, if I can call it that way? Yeah, do they see you as a threat at all? Um, I don't think so. With, with sort of 7% market share at the moment, I, I, I think we're a growing influence. Um, I don't think we're perceived as a threat at the moment. But what we see in the, in the beer drinking uh, market is that uh, the volume is not changing, mm. but the amount of... Uh, local independent beer is growing within that market wow. so so definitely the big three are getting pushed a bit but with 93 percent you know how much is enough yeah and and so <laughs> yeah we do see some strategies you know you know around trying to affect that and uh but i think people are getting smarter and and they desire something better in their lives yeah. and to be honest i think we've all worked really hard and we deserve a good beer yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah and um and, and sh look, I'm not saying that those mainstream beers aren't good. They're made beautifully and they're, they're clean and crisp and they serve a purpose. But, you know, I, I like to think of beer as, as a bit of an emotional journey. And, and it's a journey that can last you a lifetime. There are thousands of styles and thousands of brewers and thousands of beers. And, yeah. you know, you can have a different beer every day for the rest of your life probably, you know, wow. and, and get a different experience from it. You're mm. making me so thirsty. Right? <laughs> <laughs> And the beer spot, you talked about five locations. Tell us where they are and what's coming up next for the beer spot. Yeah, um, so we're really excited. We're celebrating our uh, fifth birthday on the 31st of yeah. March. Yeah! Happy birthday, Thank you, spot. thank you, yeah. So that's the, uh, that's the Northcote branch. Huapai was our second, Morningside our third, uh, Panmua our fourth, wow. and Whangaparaua our fifth. And Whangaparaua is really special because, of course, our granddad used to live yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, but for the Whangaparaua branch in the Coast Plaza there also has uh, the first ever the wine spot. So we have 40, you know, the same model replicated with wow. uh, New cool. Zealand wines. Cool. Yeah. Wow. yeah, so we're looking forward to rolling the wine spot out. Um, and in 12 months, we'd like to open uh, our first the beer spot in New South Wales. Really? Yeah. Aussie? Yeah. yeah. It's in the ditch, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, you know, i got to brush up on that. drinking beer, eh, mate? And we're so pumped to have you on today's show and to be our car full honcho. I'm really kind of uh, feeling a little bit, you know, <laughs> amazing about it. So thank so you guys. Cool. I really appreciate yes. it. A big thanks to our listeners. And uh, I understand you've got a bit of a giveaway for our yeah. listeners, which is pretty cool. Yes, we have a featured brewer at uh, each the Beer Spot site. Um, and they're on our taps for a month. And we're, we're happy to offer, um, if you rock on in and say you saw us on uh, Carpool Honcho, nice. we'll, we'll give you a Brew Buddy flight for $25, which is uh, quite a good deal. And that's uh, a selection of six one. 150 mil pours of uh, the beers they have on our taps. That's so cool, mate. Thank you so much, man. Oh, you're you welcome. So guys, yeah. Now that you're all thirsty, remember, go to the beer spot, mention the carpool honcho, and you're going to get that gift. Thank you, Jason. It's been amazing. Thank, thank you, you so guys. much. Really good. Really good brand. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you to our sponsors, the flexible office space, the crate. You yeah. Marketing guys. You yeah, yeah. Come on. A networking forum, business with locals. And our beautiful car. Thank you, Toyota New Zealand. Thanks, guys. See you Woo. next time. Thanks, That's guys. collaboration, fellas. <laughs> it's <laughs> good work. Hey, baby. I ain't asking much of you. Oh, no, 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 baby. I ain't asking much of you.